think from Newcastle point of view it's fantastic I think from a Sunderland point of view it's absolutely disastrous I think a PR disaster of the biggest proportions Mail spot football here we've got Lee Clark who played for Newcastle and Sunderland Lee tell us what it means what the derby means for well this part of the world it's very intense Adam it's uh, quite unique um, only 12 miles apart between the two clubs hasn't been a ten and weird derby for eight years now before that Sunderland had the the running of the game over the previous five or six games but uh, an exciting one FA Cup third round weekends always exciting but to have it as a local derby give it that extra uh, incentive and you were a Newcastle fan growing up grew up in a household full of Newcastle fans what did it mean back then for yourself huge I mean and my recollections as a young lad was seeing uh, Peter Beardsley score a hat-trick on New Year's Day when Newcastle won 3-1 and then obviously being involved in some exciting big games against Sunderland myself, you know, during our promotion season, winning by two free kicks, Liam O'Brien won at Roker Park, Scott Sellers at St James's, playing in front of no away fans at, at Roker Park when we beat them 2-1 there as well with Les Ferdinand and Peter Beardsley scoring, so some great, uh, you know, uh, games to, to to remember but uh, the one thing that sticks out as well that tells us how intense and the rivalry is for our home games under Kevin Keegan was the only time we ever went away and stayed in a hotel for a home yeah. game he got us out the city because it was like uh, so intense everywhere you went you went to a shop you went to a, a petrol station uh, you went for a restaurant to take away whatever you were going walked along the street Young or old, what to want to talk about the game and always finished off with you need you better win on uh, whenever the game was. What, what would you say your favourite memory is out of all of them, all the games you played in there? Um, well, I think every game when you when you uh, win uh, is is always up there with being your best ever results. Because I'll always say it's it's nothing about the performance this game you can play the best game of your, of your career and of your season as a group and but if you lose it won't be remembered for that at all it's all about the result mm -hmm. so when you win it's you know it's relief because you don't want to have that feeling luckily in my career i yeah. never lost a time in we had derby so i never had that awful feeling because i could imagine that would have lasted for a long time if you want to pick out one or two the you know as i said those that night at uh, Roker Park, when we weren't meant to have any away fans, when we did score, you could see little pockets in your castle yeah. fans jumping up and down. How, how they got the tickets that night, I don't know. <laughs> and then the one when I mentioned the promotion season, Scott Seller scoring a terrific free kick. The game shouldn't actually have been played. The conditions were awful. The pitch, the mm -hmm. ball couldn't even roll you know, five yards to a, to a teammate. So I think the fact that it was such a high-profile game, I was on television, the police and the referee wanted the game played so that one stands out as well I mean you said you never lost one the emotions of it all I mean tell us about them players tomorrow match day I mean tonight how are they feeling oh listen the the, the, the nerves will, and the you know the butterflies will be starting early um, they'll be when they're talking about it when they're getting you know the last pieces of information from the managers and mm -hmm. coaching staff you know those butterflies will start getting t more intense and especially, you know, when you're the way players as well, going into the cauldron, be a full house. Newcastle will have 6,000 fans there, but they'll be looking to uh, implement what Eddie and Michael have worked with them all week on and trying to get the right results. So, um, yeah, they'll. I think one of the things that comes out in, in, to my mind about these games, first 15 minutes is so frantic. Uh, I think it takes a while for the, both teams to settle down. I think it's a team who usually settles the best, plays the game rather than the occasion. Don't get caught up in what's happening around in the in the stadium. Are usually the ones that come out. And I'd like to think with Newcastle, with their experience, a lot of full internationals in yeah. there, and they've they've experienced some big games for club and country, especially this season with Champions League, etc. Um, that they'll have a little bit of an edge on Sunderland, who you know. They have a, the youngest squad in the championship, but with youngsters, they play without fear, and they've they've they've, they've had some terrific results at times this season. You're going to give us a prediction? Oh, I'll, I think it's going to be hard fought. If you had to tell us when the draw was made, I would have thought that if there's anything like a comfortable win in a time and we had derby, I would have said a comfortable win for Newcastle. But the form going into it, even though the old cliche is form goes out the window, yeah. um, I think it'll be tight. But I think Newcastle can come away with a two-nil win. 
Interesting. I mean, I've got to ask you about it. The decision to join Sunderland. I read about how Peter Reid told you it was about Liverpool and Everton. Similar sort of yeah. comparison. Tell yeah. us about it, how it came about. Yeah, it was obviously my old teammate who I played with in Newcastle, Paul Bracewell, was assistant manager at the Peter. I decided my time was right to move on. I'd spoke to six or seven clubs. I went to meet Peter out of courtesy, um, you know, because he, he made a big play for us. Yeah. Told him in no uncertain terms I was there out of a courteous call. I wouldn't be signing for him, but uh, a couple of hours later, I was penning a five year contract. So I had a terrific two years there as a player. Um, in my hand on my heart, it was a difficult one. Got promoted back to the Premier League. One of the reasons why it was going to be difficult and I couldn't really carry on was I never ever seen myself playing for Sunderland against Newcastle. Mm. Um, I'm not sure how that would have felt. I was a player who gave everything on the pitch, and that would have, you know, give us one or two issues professionally. So mm -hmm. thankfully, that never had to happen in terms of playing for Sunderland against Newcastle. But as I said, two great years under a brilliant manager. Made some good friends there. The lads were terrific. But, you know, they always knew I was black and white. I mean, there's that infamous moment, of course, with the T-shirt. Do you do you have any regrets over it? Or do you just think that was you, your personality and your character? No, no, out? of course. I have regrets. I'm an older man. I've been a manager. You, you know, you, do, you don't want your players or anyone associated with do, doing that type of thing. Like, it's basically biting the hand that feeds you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, obviously the, there's a lot of things... People think I was walking around London with a T-shirt on. It wasn't that case. I, I jumped out of a cab to, to go and see some friends in, in, a, in a pub owned by a Geordie. So it was full of black and whites mm -hmm. uh, before the FA Cup final. And, you know, some of the guys threw the T-shirt on. No camera phones in those days, just the old disposable ones. So and a uh, few cameras clicked and, um, you know, obviously came out in the media a few weeks later, which then made my position at Sunderland untenable. I fully understood that. Uh, not the way out you want to move on. I only played for three clubs. I'm very welcome at two and not so welcome at one. So, uh, that, that you know, as you get older, <clears throat> you get a bit wise and you think, well, maybe you could have done that a bit differently, but you can't change what's happened. I mean, how bad did it get afterwards? Was it a case of... Um, I mean, read obviously, somewhere that you had a new entrance at training. Yeah, the groundsman had to make is a because I was still in pre-season training. It was about week two weeks before uh, into pre-season before the move to Fulham came off. So um, yeah, they had to you know basically get us a new uh, entrance into the training ground. There's a few of the Sunderland fans ready to lynch us, and rightly so. You know, listen, I fully understood you can't be doing that to your own supporters, and especially uh, you know I done done two years of good work with them because uh, you know they knew I never hid the fact while I was playing my Sunderland, I'd still always go over to St James's when there was a game I lived in Newcastle they knew where um, my loyalties lay as a supporter but what I'd done when I played for them I gave everything I could and uh, had two impressive years there so it's not the way you want things to end but uh, unfortunately that's the way it did Are you going to be there at the game tomorrow? I'm still undecided I'm not too sure I mean uh, um, I've been once the only time I've actually been back for a game at, at any sort of level at, at the Stadium of Light was for a time in Weir Derby or a Weir Tyne Derby with it being at Sunderland first and it was Sam Allardyce's first game as Sunderland manager at home and Sunderland ran out 3-0 winners so um, I, I'm not sure Northumbria Police were very happy when I turned up with a powder keg game <laughs> for me just to light it up a little bit more so I, I'm, I'm not too sure on that one well, They've won quite a few in the trot I think it's 2011 the last time Newcastle won I mean yeah. fairly hard going through a tricky time at the moment I mean I know it's an FA Cup third round win but what would it mean tomorrow how big is that? This game is as big as any this season and that you know includes Champions League because as I said it's the intense it's the rivalry and for Newcastle and for us, it's a chance to get the season up and running again. The the injury situation, I know Eddie doesn't want to make excuses. I don't, but this is the reality. The injury situations has derailed our season hugely. So if we can get this win in a, in a really high-profile game and we can get you know a lot of the injured players back, because when we've got everyone fit, we've got a formidable team. We, we can challenge anyone in the league. So we'll... Uh, it could it could be a chance for us to, to go on another good cup run. Saying the confidence there, getting the season up and running, January transfer window, what do you see the two or three players or positions where Newcastle have really got to invest in? It's really difficult because I think Eddie and Dan have already talked about this, Dan Ashworth, and they've talked about it's difficult to for them to pick a position and pick the players or what roles they want until they know about 
the long term injuries of the players who are out because yeah. if they for example if they get a couple of defenders back they might need to look in the attacking positions if they get a couple of attackers back you know they've got injuries at goalkeeper position defence midfield attack and I think that's what they're assessing so I think there's a chance Newcastle might wait to the final week 10 days before they start doing any business mm -hmm. I think they'd like to do some it's a difficult month in January for anyone, but I think Newcastle would like to do one or two bits and pieces. But I think the injury situation will, will dictate where they go and, and, and who they try and bring in. It's on that, what as a fan, what do you think, or who do you think are the two or three players that the club could do with potentially, whether it's in January or in the summer? Anyone? That, well, yeah. listen, I think there's the touting around of Calvin Phillips. I think uh, Newcastle haven't really got that out and out single minded yeah. defensive midfield player you know Bruno Gomirez was brought in and that was his title but he's far from that that, that, that mm -hmm. done him a massive disservice he's a tremendous box to box midfield player he likes to get on the ball he wants to dictate the tempo of the game he has an unbelievable passing range he can assist and he can score so I think you, you would be doing him a disservice if you restricted him just to be defensive midfield player Sean Longstaff and Joe Linton have great legs Joe mm -hmm. Willick when he's in there as well obviously young Lewis Smiley's come in and it's been absolutely outstanding you know highlight of the season so yeah I mean I think Calvin Phillips would, would do I think we've got two terrific strikers but they have a history of, of injuries unfortunately throughout their career yeah. so the, you know there could be a possible but everyone's looking for another striker always I mean I've had to score goals whenever they're fit they've got a great goal ratio but it's just that problem that you know I think Callum Wilson's missing again tomorrow so yeah. th th there's that history of them having injuries so it, it, when you look at it I mean you, you would say you, what you might say are oh, wide players but then you think oh well, we've got Harvey Barnes to come back from an injury so there's lots of little different facets to to to, to play with and decide and I think this is why it's it, this January window will be a real test for both Eddie and Dan and the recruitment team on on how they assess the injured players and, and, and who do they go for it's actually the biggest test yet isn't it coming out of this window going ahead to the yeah well. I think so as I said if, if if we had everyone fit we've got a terrific squad not very big yeah. but a terrific squad um, you know we have a real strong bench with, with the start 11 which is always a good sign of a good team but I've just never known an injury situation like it how many you know important players have gone down with long-term injuries and mm -hmm. uh, it's been really tough and every time you think there's a little bit light at the end of the tunnel there's another injury that to contend with like down at Anfield the other night missing Kieran Trippier and, mm -hmm. and, and Callum Wilson again so it's been tough already there's been lads who've had to come in who've done terrific you know there's no finger pointing at anyone everybody the lads who've come in have done a terrific job but at one stage you know you were fielding the same outfield 10 players for like four or five games in a row with two two days rest between each game and yeah. that'll take its toll especially when you're you know one the Champions League Premier League uh, quarter final at Carabao Cup. These are all high profile games against top teams, and there's no surprise when you know there's been a few indifferent results. I mean, just finishing off with some light hearted stuff. I mean, the Sunderland hospitality section, kitted out in Newcastle gear. What do you make of that? Have a bit of a I, laugh? Yeah, I, I, I think from Newcastle point of view, it's fantastic. I think from a Sunderland point of view, it's absolutely disastrous. I think a PR disaster of the, the biggest proportions. I think uh, the fans, Sunderland fans, were already a bit angry that. Newcastle fans were getting put in an area where season yeah. ticket holders were situated so that didn't go down too well to start with I think the fact that this room was kitted out um, with you know Newcastle United slogans did it and make scenes, you laugh a bit? it did oh, it's great from Newcastle United point of view you could, but I just kind of believe that another away club would allow the you know the home club would allow an away club to 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 do that to a hospitality area. I mean, it doesn't happen when you go away from home in your league program. You try and make it as difficult and and not very nice place as possible for your away you know the away team. So for them to try and do that and think that would have been accepted. So I think uh, for the sake of the hierarchy and the people behind the scenes at Sunderland. I think uh, they would like a win even more because I think if if they don't get that win, this will get brought up by the Sunderland fans because I think there's a lot of uh, uh, disappointment and frustration by what's happened. But yeah. there's a lot there's a lot of uh, happy Newcastle fans by what's happened. That's for sure. 
One of them actually says to us, they're all like the red carpet for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were, uh, that's what the, I think the players will be expecting that. And, uh, you know, I've seen a few of the uh, things on social media where they've, at the stadium, have like they've pushed the Sunderland badge to one side and they've put a big Newcastle United crest in the middle. All, all fun and games leading up to it.